America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. For 300 people in my emailing, they certainly did not believe and had no reason to believe that what they were sending was classified. I wish to have the following noted for the record, that I have never been arrested or indicted for any crime whatsoever, that no proof linking me to any criminal conspiracy, whether it is called Mafia or Cosa Nostra, or whatever other name you wish to give, has ever been made public. I have not taken refuge behind the Fifth Amendment, nor it is my right to do so. I challenge this committee to produce any witness or evidence against me. And if they do not, I hope they will have the decency to clear my name with the same publicity with which they now have besmirched. It is the Savage Nation for Friday the 28th of October in the year 2016. The roller coaster has just gone up, 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 ratcheting up, 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 and boy, did it come down. Breaking news, FBI reopens Clinton email investigation. Now, on the brink of an election for Mr. Comey of the FBI to do this means he was under tremendous political pressure to do so. He says uh, the reason he's reopening the Clinton email probe is because there is... Uh, a series of new invest new new emails. That's not the reason. That's not the reason at all. In my estimation, I have my own analysis, which I will give you in the next few minutes. I don't want to rush it all at once. This is an October surprise that just exploded in the presidential race just hours ago. For the FBI to so suddenly announce it's reopening its investigation into Hillary Clinton's classified emails as a result of learning of new documents that, quote, appear to be pertinent to the investigation, I don't believe that's true. I don't believe that's true at all. I believe that that's a, that's a cover story as to why Mr. Comey is doing this. I have my own opinion as to why the FBI is suddenly reopening the Hillary case on the, on the eve of the election, because it's going to destroy her candidacy. If anything can do it, it's this. Now, you could say it's just a, a, a jive move coming from Hillary herself, and he's going to reopen it, and by the end of the week of next week, he'll say, we found out that there's nothing there again, goodbye. That's a possibility. Anything is possible with people as clever as the folks surrounding Hillary Clinton. So anything could happen, okay? They're usually several steps ahead of anyone's analysis. Or it could be something else, and I'm going to tell you what my analysis is in the next few minutes. Because just last month, Mr. Comey, the uh, director of the FBI, rejected requests from Republicans to reopen the investigation. At the time, he said he hadn't seen new evidence that would come near taking such an extraordinary step. Why all of a sudden? Well, the Bureau put out uh, a memo. FBI Director James Comey said in a letter to House Oversight Committee Chairman Jason Chaffetz the following. He said, in connection with an unrelated case, the FBI has learned of the existence of emails that appear to be pertinent to the investigation. I am writing to inform you that the investigative team briefed me on this yesterday, and I agree that the FBI should take appropriate investigative steps designed to allow investigators to review these emails to determine whether they contain classified information, as well as to assess their importance to our investigation. Classic bureaucraties that has fundamentally no meaning, because I don't believe it. I don't believe that's the reason. I believe there's another reason that underlies all of this. This kind of 12th hour opening of the Clinton email investigation. You do understand how devastating this is, don't you? Washington Post, FBI to conduct new investigation of emails from Clinton's private server. New York Post, FBI is reopening its Clinton email probe. Washington Times, breaking news, FBI reopens Clinton email investigation. My friends, life is imitating art. On the same day this has happened, we learn that Attorney General Loretta Lynch is pleading the Fifth Amendment on secret Iran ransom payments. Do you have any idea what this means, that an Attorney General of the United States of America would take the Fifth Amendment, something that is generally done only by criminals? This entire administration under Obama, over and over again, has done what the gangsters have done in previous years in this country. Do you know how many times they've taken the Fifth? I know how many times because we played them. Whether it was the IRS guy, 
I hereby take the Fifth Amendment. Now the Attorney General herself, do you have any idea what this means? What this means is this. Here's the Attorney General of the United States pleading the Fifth Amendment, the way gangsters used to plead the Fifth Amendment in the 1950s in gangster movies. You remember the Valachi papers? I have never seen anything like this. So what they're saying to us is this. Obama is saying to us the following. He's saying, you know what? Catch us if you can. We have no ethics, no morals. Winning is all we care about. Drop dead. Take a walk. I'm going to have a nice party in the White House now with the lowest scum of the earth from the gutters of America. Now, I don't want Tchaikovsky. I don't want ruffles and triffles, and I don't want stuff like that. I want gangster rap that, that talks about the glorification of drugs, debasing women, and you'll take it anyway because I own the press. Drop dead. Take a walk. But he doesn't talk like that, so you buy it. He doesn't talk like a longshoreman in a, in a Marlon Brando movie from the 50s on the waterfront, does he? He doesn't sound like a truck driver in New York did in the 1970s or in the 60s. I don't know how long ago they talked like that. But my friends, that's exactly what he's saying. He's as gruff as any of the gravel-voiced guys with the wool suits that appeared before Congress in the 1950s, maybe even rougher. But I don't think he wears wool suits, and it doesn't matter what he wears. All that matters is that he is a wolf in sheep's clothing. And what is Hillary then? Is she a wolf in sheep's clothing, or is she a wolf in wolf's clothing? There's no other... There's no. I'm, I'm getting excited. There is no precedent for this in American history, where a regime is as corrupt as this one. And now Comey, on the eve of the election, drops a bombshell, reopening the Clinton email investigation. Why is he doing it? I haven't given you my theory yet, but I know uh, there's a little bit back there's background here to reopen this probe. It has very little to do with Hillary. It has more to do with Mr. Comey, in my opinion. And without giving you the entire story right now, I will give you a hint as to why Mr. Comey has suddenly done this. Let me just say a few words. Lockheed Martin, HSBC Holdings, and Peter Comey. Let me just say those words. Lockheed Martin, HSBC Holdings, and Peter Comey. And you'll understand that everything in Washington is hardball. They're playing more than hardball. They're playing, uh, what's the uh, game, racquetball? They're playing racquetball right now. It's coming at... It's coming at Comey from eight, from four different walls in eight different directions, faster than to keep up with these hardballs coming at him. I've told you we're less than ten days away to the election. I've asked the deplorables to act now. I've asked you to understand what scorched earth policies mean. I've asked you to give a copy of scorched earth to an undecided because they do not know what kind of corruption there is in this administration. Well, maybe now they will come to understand that is Trump or bust. Charles on WFTL, line one, 30 seconds, fire away. Yes, I think that Mr. Comey is trying to suppress a raging fire at the FBI, oh. and that he has come to realize that he could be a subject of an obstruction of justice uh, charge, which is the exact same thing that Nixon got nailed on. So well, hold, hold on, now wait, hold it. He fears, in your mind, Mr. Comey, the head of the FBI, you are, you're alleging that Mr. Comey fears he could be charged with obstruction of justice by whom? By Loretta Lynch? Well, that's the whole thing, is that the whole system is corrupt. So I, I don't know what's going to come from it, because um, it, it, it's a criminal enterprise. Who, when, when the people who are... Oh, no, I understand, but you, you made a very interesting point. Comey's watching his own back. He's afraid of being indicted. By whom? Who would indict him? Well, I don't think there would be an indictment, but I think there'd be a mass resignation at the FBI. And what would that do? What would that do for anybody? What do they care? They replace them with stooges from the from the gutter. They give them a badge and an FBI badge. They would take people uh, off the gutter and make them FBI agents. You think this administration would search farther than that? Uh, what I think is that the American people would finally wake up. Because that uh, the American people. I don't believe. I don't believe there is an American people. I, I don't know that there is an American people. Where are they? Where have they been all along? Take me out to the ball game, watching a goon with tattoos on his neck, spitting on the American flag and still going to his games? 
still riding around with 49ers banners after this guy spits on the national anthem? That's the America you think cares about email scandals? I don't. Well, no, I think there's something very personal about this, Charles. I think there's some grave threat hanging over the head of Mr. Comey that uh, the Republicans went in the back room and said to him, either you open this case up again and you do it before the election or we're going to indict you. That's what I think. Now, what grounds would they indict Mr. Comey on is the question. On what grounds do you think they would do that? Well, he closed the first investigation knowing that there was uh, indictable evidence or, or that there should have been at least a grand jury. That's obstruction. Are you an attorney, uh, Charles? No, absolutely not. My brother so is an attorney. All right, well, you make some very salient points. And in the few weeks that remain, I'm sending you a copy of Scorched Earth, specifically not for yourself because you're quite cognizant of the situation that we are facing which is the complete meltdown of ethics, morals, law, and the United States of America if this gang seizes the opportunity once again to destroy this nation's borders, language, and culture. And so give the Scorched Earth book that I'm sending to you to an undecided who does not really know what is happening in this country. But who do you think is really behind this is the question. I have people saying the opposite of what that man just said. And I don't have the time to grab it now. We'll do it the minute I come back. There's no other story that's worth talking about. I am shocked that this October surprise blew up today across the nation. And by the way, I was on the phone this morning with the Trump campaign, and they said, we, we love your show. Please keep it up. Give us the time. We'll be on next week, and I'll be right back to take your calls right here on the Savage Nation. great respect for the fact that the FBI and the Department of Justice are now willing to have the courage to right the horrible mistake that they made. This was a grave miscarriage of justice that the American people fully understood. And it is everybody's hope that it is about to be corrected. Well, you're listening to the sound of the deplorables, people without teeth, people who drag their knuckles on the ground. Uh, the deplorables, you know, the type that uh, doesn't go to NYU or Harvard Law. These are the types that um, do everything else in the country and pay all the taxes. They actually don't evade taxes because they don't know how. They don't have high-priced accountants high-priced lawyers. These are the American Eddies I talked about before who are dying for their nation back. The agony that they are living through is palpable wherever you go. They see a nation given away lock, stock, and barrel by a con man in the White House who's a front man for the, some of the worst people on the planet. WikiLeaks came out showing that Clinton's aides do the bidding of one of the worst men in the history of the planet, George Soros. A man who was an emigre, allegedly from Nazi oppression, who has spent his entire life undermining democracies around the world, under the guise of restoring democracies around the world. But behind it all is a greedy, a, bib, a man of biblical proportions, a greed level that you can never imagine. A man who would break nations for 30 pieces of silver is now controlling America. He's the one who put the stooge in the White House. Listen closely. Listen closely. Many of us have studied this in great detail. The puppet master is the man who put the rap-loving stooge in the White House. The puppet master is the man funding the trolls all over my Facebook page, your Facebook page. Every website in the country is being trolled to the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars. George Soros gave 90 or so million dollars to the thugs in Black Lives Matter, the people who gave us riots, the people who've encouraged the killing of police, the people who have lied about everything to do with the criminal justice system in order to, to further the agenda of those who would destroy this nation's very fabric. The cop has become the criminal, the criminal has become the hero, not to me it hasn't, 
They haven't. Maybe to you it has. In San Francisco, we have a crime wave that's out of control being covered up by the newspapers. They don't even report on the crime wave. Robberies, muggings, burglaries, car break-ins, house break-ins, out of control. Because although the police are brave and true and moral in this city, they have been compromised by the forces of evil. But let's go to the big picture and the compromise of the forces of evil. Why do you think the FBI is reopening the Hillary case now? Why? Why are they reopening it now? Or is it a platonic thing, I mean Plato thing of shadows on the wall? Where we're reading what we what they want us to read, but it's really a, a feign and it's gonna turn out the other way. I need to open with a very critical breaking news announcement. The FBI has just sent a letter to Congress informing them that they have discovered new emails pertaining to the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's investigation. <laughs> And they are reopening the case into her criminal and illegal conduct that threatens the security of the United States of America. Wow. Hillary Clinton's corruption is on a scale we have never wow. seen before. We must not let her take her criminal scheme into the Oval Office. <laughs> Well, you hear them chanting, lock her up. Do you know what that does to the professors at NYU Law? Do you know what that does to George Soros and his son up in their penthouse there in Manhattan? Do you know what that does to the senators and the Congress people around America who are as corrupt as those in Paraguay were in the 1940s? They are terrified that should this upstart businessman who they have tried to vilify in every which way they could, with a little help, I should say with a lot, of, a lot of help from their friends, you know, the Beatles song, they get by, they get high with a little help from their friends. Yeah. Their fear is that they're next. Their fear is that when Trump wins, those mobs will be outside their office screaming, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up, lock her up. And they, in their 80s, some of them, will be marched out in handcuffs when a new attorney general takes over in the United States of America under a Donald J. Trump administration. They're terrified that they themselves will be indicted and pulled down. And they know, they know therefore, that everything is at stake. So I'm asking you again, how could this be happening all of a sudden on this Friday when normally it's a slow news day, that Mr. Comey comes back to America after saying that she committed this, committed that, but was no crime, no indictment, and we heard the rumblings within the FBI itself that many of the top agents were going to quit, that they knew he was he was faking it and lying. And then we asked ourselves, well, why did he do that? And then we found the story that there is a deep connection between FBI Director James Comey and the Clinton Foundation. This came out a few weeks ago in uh, a number of sources. A review of FBI Director James Comey's professional history and relationship shows that the Obama cabinet leader, now under fire for his handling of the investigation of Hillary Clinton, is deeply entrenched in the big money cronyism culture of Washington, D.C. His personal and professional relationships, all undisclosed as he announced the Bureau would not prosecute Clinton, etc. This was from Patrick Howley of Breitbart. Now, what is he talking about? He writes, These concerns focus on millions of dollars that Comey accepted from a Clinton Foundation defense contractor. Comey's former membership on a Clinton Foundation corporate partners board and his surprising financial relationship with his brother Peter Comey, who works at the law firm, hold on to your hats, his brother works at the law firm that does the Clinton Foundation's taxes. Now, I don't know if any of these statements or allegations are actually true. 
but I'm reading to you a statement written by Patrick Howley of Breitbart, and he backs it up by saying that when Comey was appointed by uh, Obama in 2013, Comey promised the U.S. Senate that he would recuse himself in all cases involving former employers. But at the time, Comey earned $6 million in one year alone from Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin became a Clinton Foundation donor that very year. Comey served as Deputy Attorney General under John Ashcroft for two years of the Bush administration. When he left the Bush administration, he went directly to Lockheed Martin and became Vice President, acting as a General Counsel. They ask, how much money did James Comey make from Lockheed Martin in his last year with the company, which he left in 2010? And they answer it, more than $6 million in compensation. All right, there's nothing wrong with that. He's a lawyer. He's a corporate lawyer. He's entitled to make money. But then he adds... Lockheed Martin is a Clinton Foundation donor. The company admitted to becoming a Clinton Global Initiative member in 2010. According to records, Lockheed Martin is also a member of the American Chamber of Commerce in Egypt, which paid Bill Clinton $250,000 to deliver one speech in 2010. And what happened then? In 2010, Lockheed Martin won 17 approvals for private contracts from the Hillary Clinton State Department. There is more about HSBC Holdings. So if you if you believe any of these statements, and I have no reason to, to doubt them, because I think he would have been in real trouble if he wrote these, these exposés about James Comey's Clinton Foundation connection in Breitbart. If you believe these things, and you know that there's a revolution brewing inside the FBI itself over what he did by letting Hil Hillary walk, what, you know, you're saying, well, what's this really all about? Just a few emails. I, I think you need to go back to really what this is about. She was not sending emails about uh, her Pilates class or about the, the current diet that she may be on. Some of those emails were marked, what, C, classified. Do you understand what that means? Do you understand the law? Do you know what happens if an FBI agent himself sends a classified document? Do you have any idea what happens in the military if a mere soldier should receive a document marked C and then shares it on an unprotected server? How many of pe how many people like that are currently in Fort Leavenworth prison? Look into that before you give us an answer. So what is this all about? Why is Mr. Comey Mr. Comey doing this now? Uh you could easily make the conclusion, if you're a, a, a novelist or a film writer or whatever, that if you're writing this story, it's as simple as this. I don't think it's that complicated. I think that Chaffetz, Chaffetz, whatever his pronunciation is, believe me, believe me, I don't know, and the Senate Intelligence Committee or, or whatever the committee is investigating this deal has so much egg on his face for having failed us so many times that the Republicans are trying to show that they are still trustworthy, that they still have teeth. Remember, many of them are up for re-election. They're afraid they're going to be thrown out because they didn't do their job. I'm talking about Republicans now. So in the last-ditch effort to save their own skins, they went back to Comey, and they called him into a private meeting, and they said, unless you reopen this case, uh, coming up with some story that new emails gave you new information, you can reopen it, unless you do that, we're going to uh, seek to indict you before a federal jury, a federal grand jury on whatever charges they'll come up with. And then there's another element to this. And I guess I'm pure guessing now. One man's opinion, one guy looking in from the outside. I have no inside information. I want to tell you that again. I don't function in Washington. I haven't been there in 15 years. Is that they fear that Trump is going to win. The surge going in favor of Trump frightened them all. And they are afraid that if Trump has a victory, he will not only indict Mr. Comey, he's liable to indict some other people. For whatever the charges may be, remember remember what's going on here. There's a lot at stake. This is a, a true war now. What you have is a war going on between the two gangs, the Democrat gang and the Republican gang. So the Republican gang seems to think that they might win the election. Even though they will hold their nose and it will be Trump, they understand that a new attorney general under Trump 
has the power to bring charges against anyone that they wish to bring charges against. It's a terrible thing to say to you, but there's an old joke that the FBI could indict a ham sandwich if it wanted to. That's not a joke if it happens to you. But the fact of the matter is they're terrified that if Trump wins, he appoints an AG. God knows who, would that, who, would, who, would that, who that would be. I don't even know who's on his short list, short list to be attorney general under Donald Trump. But let's say that attorney general is straight. Well, let's say straighter than what we have been getting used to here now. And they want to get the country cleaned up. What do you think they're going to do? Who do you think they'll go after first? Maybe that's the reason. I have no idea what's going on here. Truthfully, do you? Do you know this guy was a seven-term congressman? Can you believe a nut like this guy, Anthony Weiner, was a seven-term congressman? And then had the audacity to think that he could get away with becoming mayor of New York? Anyway, if you watch the Showtime documentary, you see a very sick man who belongs not so much in prison, although there was element, an element that I have to talk about. The last pictures that, that they caught or of him in his underwear uh, texting a girl or whatever they call it, sexting a girl, with his little baby crooked in his right arm next to him while he was doing it. <sighs> to, me, that's, to me, that's child abuse. To me, the man, I'm sorry for that act alone. You know there are men in this country who went to prison for a lot less than that. Think about it. A grown man, a father, is in his underwear, boxer shorts at that, and you could see his um, uh, male uh, thing, whatever. In the right hand, he has his baby, a little boy, an innocent little boy whose mind will be warped for the rest of his life in the right arm. In his left hand, he's t sexting some girl, while his wife, Huma Abedin, is busily at work for Hillary Clinton. I mean, does it get any sicker than this? I guess it does. But who would expose himself like this? Uh, apparently, the girl he was sexting the picture to sent it out to the media it just shows you how intelligent he is that he would expose himself like this could you imagine what i'm saying to you what this means